Hello Biotechnicans. This is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we will have a yet an interesting video on the importance of bioinformatics in drug discovery. So what is the importance of drug discovery? Why should we learn bioinformatics? All these questions will be actually addressed in this particular video. So let's dive in. So welcome back. As I told you in the preamble, we would have an insight on the importance of bioinformatics in drug discovery. So without much ado, let me try to make you understand what exactly is bioinformatics. Now people thought initially it was when the advent of computer, people thought once we have the computer, we will relate this computer to biology and everything will be taken care. That's not the case my dear. So the intention was we need to look into how exactly statistics could come into bioinformatics. You know, again, you have information sciences which can come into bioinformatics, computer science which actually dictates bioinformatics and very importantly, how do I understand biology using computers in a much better way. So it is not that all I need is just a computer, but on the other way, all I need is an amalgamation of all this pure allied inter intra and all the allied sciences has to come together to become a transdisciplinary sciences so that we can explore biology in a much better way. So with this people thought okay now I sitting just in front of computer is of no help so what do I do I start collaborating. Now when they started collaborating there was a mix of ideas, they were a mix of the machine with the mind and because of this new technology emerged and this new technology helped in anal analyzing the design of the study, the, uh, the component of the study and it made better molecules and very importantly this actually act you know acted as a platform for designing in vitro and in vivo studies. So hence bioinformatics has a great boom in drug discovery. So to make you understand in a much better way initially people thought of the, the classical central dogma and the classical central dogma talks about the gene, gene to, pro gene to your RNA and RNA to protein. But however now there are a lot of variations, there are a lot of metabolites which have been there and with this there is something which is called as systems biology. Now in systems biology people have a big leap from what we call it as a simple you know central dogma to the modern central dogma and what we know at this point of time is everything is emerging and because technology is emerging your molecular structures are emerging the understanding of the sub sub molecular structures are emerging and this is actually giving a lot of room for not just studying variations in humans but also for studying various kinds of variations in various other organisms also. So with this bioinformatics has huge amount of application. Now what are these applications? Let me try to make you understand. So these application involves the biomolecular interactions. So it enables me to understand the biomolecular interactions between one molecule and another molecule what we call it as the ligand with a ligand or it also enables me to understand the ligand with the target. So how is this particular ligand going and binding to the target this particular component could be better understood in your biomolecular interaction. And Beyond this, you can also develop a lot of biological networks which will give you an idea of whether your molecule, that is your ligand molecule, whether it will qualify the, the in vitro or in vivo experiment. So this is how you can very easily, you can actually give up um, a, a framework for your research. Now apart from that, you know, drug designing has become a very predominant you know, domain and everybody wherein you have a chemist they are interested in drug design. You have a biologist, they are interested in drug design. Now beyond this, now the trend is computer science students are interested in drug design and very importantly, I had an internship and in this internship, it was a mechanical engineer who was actually designing drugs. So wherein because of this all inter and transdisciplinary sciences, drug discovery has, has actually launched in its uh, skyrocketing form. Now this 
or bioinformatics also is aiding in finding new genes uh, not just in terms of diseases people are finding new genes towards you know how do i increase lifespan uh, how do i get out of the depression how do i get out of anxiety okay how do i change my microbiome all these functional genomics computational genomics okay metabolomics uh, phylogenetics all these new new branches are emerging which is just the application of bioinformatics now if you move on further this would give into a very important discovery which is called as drugs for customized people that is precision medicine will come in in the next 10 years and this would be a major contribution from your bioinformatics and um, you know drug for the drug discovery newer therapeutics and design so it is not just that you have biological data you need to analyze this data uh, which is a huge data this has to be analyzed on to a computer which will actually help in analyzing the the data in a much easier and much in a efficient way which can reduce lot of your errors and mistakes so the knowledge could be always enhanced but what is this discovery casket now everybody is talking about the discovery casket but what is this what how exactly this can make a huge impact in a in a career of a life science student so if you look into the entire pathway the entire story starts with finding up of a target molecule so once you have the the target molecule which has been analyzed either either using biochemistry or molecular biology then you can go for high throughput uh, screening now once you go for high throughput screening you will also understand how do i understand this in a much better way and hence you will go for the structure biology and molecular modeling using stimulation studies now once you have confirmed your your target uh, ligand complexes then you can always go on to the medicinal chemistry component with the medicinal chemistry you are looking into how exactly the ligand molecule is interacting with that of your target now once you are well versed with it then you start designing structuring your lead molecule optimizing your lead molecule and this is mainly by pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies wherein you look into the metabolic component of it and once you look into the metabolic component of it you you confirm the pharmacological properties of it and you see that what exactly is the drug likeliness of that particular ligand molecule and for this you create a biggest library on your computer which is called as the the phytochemical library or it could be retrosynthetic library or it could be an herbal library okay so with this as an intention you go into an r&d clear all your preclinical data and once you know that the preclinical data is working then you can always pitch into the drug drug discovery pipeline and this drug discovery and development pipeline talks about six major compartments and the first compartment as we have already discussed it starts with the the target identification then it goes into the hit identification very importantly the third step is the lead optimization and after lead optimization you have the pre clinical trials which has to be done on you know small animals and from there you go on to the clinical trials and once you have the clinical trials a series of stages which will qualify your clinical trials then you can go on to the final step which is called as your drug approval from the fda once you have cleared this pipeline because on on the on the computer whatever i am trying to explain it might look very very simple but trust me my dear friends this is a laborious process which would involve time money and many a times you know uh, this can also lead into failure now uh, as per the research it has been found that almost 80 to 85% of drugs which will qualify your preclinical data normally they fail in their clinical trial so hence we need to be extraordinarily precautious when we are trying to funnel down all these ligand molecules and where in outside the funnel that is at the end of the funnel you have one major molecule which can create history so this is what people are looking at and this is how people are looking for those novel pipelines novel molecules and with this as a system they would start uh, with uh, three major stages in drug discovery that is one is the drug discovery itself stage 2 is the preclinical data and the stage 3 is the clinical data and as we know that clinical data always has an other five steps and many a times we look into a particular population which is called as yopi that is y o p i y stands for young o stands for old 
uh, P stands for pregnant and I stands for immunocompromised patients. So once I look into all these particular categories, then I have that wonder molecule and this wonder molecule needs the regulatory approvals. And once I get that regulatory approvals, that is how your drug comes into the shelf of the pharmacist. So once this has been done, what are the various kinds of applications in drug discovery? You can, you can, you, you keep naming it and you know, every day new, new technologies are coming. Now, for your information, uh, bioinformatics and especially your high throughput sequencing um, and uh, you know, uh, drug discovery is leading into a major change in the way we have thought epigenetics, the way we have thought genomics, then you know, transcriptomics, then ribosomal profiling, proteomics and very importantly the way we thought in terms of the genome architecture. So hence all this put together is bringing a big boom in, in drug discovery which is actually a, a, towards a, a, a beneficial end. Now what are the merits of this drug discovery? Now the, the merits of drug discovery is the application of bioinformatics. Please remember initially I had to do all of in vitro studies and from the in vitro studies I would go for in vivo studies and with the in vivo studies finally some many a time the drug would fail or some point of time the drug would qualify. But however, now with the advent of in silico systems, I can utilize the entire computer platform and tell whether my particular drug will work or not. And this is a huge application wherein I am saving a lot of money and time for, for increasing my productivity. So here I can have an, uh, you know, target molecule, I can have a lead molecule, I can see using either pharmacology or reverse pharmacology, I can see whether where exactly this particular ligand is going and binding and that is how I get a major application out of it. Now, uh, uh, certain very important bioinformatic tools in most of our videos, we, we have made sure that these particular tools have been well explained so that our students go and try it out onto the databases such as you know, NCBI, EMBL or DDBJ. So here what we do is we will acquire the, the, the target, we will decide on the target, either this could be a protein or a, you know, or a, a, a DNA molecule or an RNA molecule. From there, we will see what exactly is the sequence alignment, you know, what exactly is the sequence similarity and either it could be a single sequence or a multiple sequence and once we know about this we'll go for molecular docking studies which will give me a predictive model to for the interaction with, between a ligand molecule and a target molecule and once this has been done then we will ramify it uh, to uh, the next model wherein we are looking for the stimulation studies between the complex and how best is the complex stable in a given body or in a given environment either it could be an hydrophilic environment or an hydrophobic environment this will give you an idea about the stability of your drug and your target molecule so with this this is the molecular stimulation studies what I was talking about and this will give you an idea of uh, about the, the stability of your, your complex that is the ligand target complex in a given system. So if all these are working well, so what would be the limitation of it? And the major limitation of bioinformatics in drug discovery is remember whatever I am trying to do it on the computer, it is always on one to one interaction. Okay, I am doing in an artificial environment that is in silico. I am doing it on an in silico that is a silicon chip which is the computer made up of. So under this condition, you know, when I translate the in silico result onto the in vivo or onto the in vivo, there is high chances that until now I was looking into one to one interaction but here in my body there are already thousand reactions going on and how exactly your ligand molecule will interact with the already going on reactions and how exactly your target would respond to it this becomes very very crucial and because of this reason your bioinformatics result should be always validated with the wet lab result if not many a times this can lead into failure this is the one major you know drawback of uh, bioinformatics in drug discovery and very importantly uh, you need to also understand how exactly the receptor complex is interacting because when you're doing it onto the computer it is only one receptor but however in your body there are many receptors many targets and we need to understand the toxicological component one component it would be better but however in the same component the ligand if it is toxic then I cannot really use this particular drug. This has not been analyzed using your um, you know single single interaction uh, using bioinformatics but however when I translate into the, uh, the living system this creates a big problem. So understanding this limitation is very very important. Now with this 
I really want to end this particular uh, video saying that you have a tool, you have the technology, but you should be a wiser user of it so that you know where to start, be productive. But however, this result has to be validated using your biological experimentation. So with this hope, I am very sure that this particular video is of great help for you. And if you require any kind of an assistance, please do write to us at support at biotechnica.org. And we conduct a lot of internships on bioinformatics, uh, which is now amalgamated with artificial intelligence and machine learning, deep learning. And we will see that the best of the best will come to our biotechnicians. All the very best. Take care.